To keep your bike in good working order, it's important that you service it from time to time in the same way that you service your car. And one of the most important areas to keep on top of is your drivetrain, particularly if you have a triathlon coming up. Leave that dirty or in bad working order and you could be wasting valuable watts and energy. So today, I'm gonna to be using my bike as an example because it's rather dirty and I'm gonna be showing you how to prep and clean your drivetrain ready for race day. Well, firstly, it's probably worth us explaining exactly what our drivetrain is. And it is essentially all these moving parts here that help to move the bike along. We've got our cranks, our chain rings, our bottom bracket, our chain, and our derailleurs. This is a really important area of the bike because as you ride your bike and you change between the gears, these components and parts all pull and rub on each other. And without a lubricant between them, you've essentially got metal on metal, which is not what you want. And throwing grit and dirt with that, you've got a horribly gritty and rough drivetrain, which is only gonna deteriorate those parts and components. So that's where the lubricant comes in, but that will wash away and wear away over time. So it's important you stay on top of lubricating these parts, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's talk about the servicing because there is no point in going to all the effort of cleaning the parts if they're well past their best and maybe need replacing anyway. And one of the most common parts of the drivetrain to be replaced and to wear out is our chain. And one of the easiest ways of measuring chain wear is with a chain checker tool like this one. Now, this one has a series of numbers on it. We've got zero, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and 1.0. And that is basically the percentage of elongation between the links. So anything up to 0 0.5 and you can keep using that chain, it's okay. Anything above 0 0.5 and yeah, that chain is past its best and you probably want to replace it. Now this works by inserting the two pins underneath in between the chain links. And we're starting on zero and we're gonna push this black dial until those pins can't push against the links anymore. Now I'll we'll remove that. And actually, my chain is past its best. We're sitting more or less on 0 0.75. But if you don't have a chain check at all, you can always just use a ruler. And we're gonna use a 12 inches as our guide on this. And we're gonna count 12 chain links. And that includes one outer and one inner. And if we line up the zero, with one of the chain links. And then the 12 inch mark should then line up with the rivet at the end. But as I've shown already, my chain is slightly elongated. And then if you just want to do a quick and rough check without any tools, then you want to whack your chain in the big ring. And then we're going to look at the three o'clock position on the chain ring. And you're just going to grab the chain and try and pull it off. Now, a good and new chain, you'll be barely able to pull it off and won't be able to see much daylight between the chain and the chain ring. But for a worn out chain, then you're gonna start to see some daylight and you may even be able to pull it almost away from one of the teeth. And if it is elongated past that recommended point, then it's actually advised that you change the chain and the cassette at the same time. Now that might sound odd, the need to replace the cassette and the chain, but they both wear into each other over use. So you can actually get away with just replacing the chain, but if you find that the chain starts slipping, it's not changing gear very well, or just making a lot of noise, then that may well be the issue. You may well need to replace that cassette, which is another good reason and not to leave this until the night before the race. Make sure you change it well in advance, and then you can find out whether it works, and it's all okay to go. And if that's all okay, then it's time to start cleaning. We're gonna start the back of the drivetrain and on the cassette. Now you can fully remove the cassette as I've shown in a previous video and then fully soak that cassette, or you can quite thoroughly clean it whilst it's still installed on the wheel. So we're gonna take a look at that easier option. And for that, we've head outside. And we're gonna start spraying a bit of degreaser onto that cassette now avoid the urge to start scrubbing at it straight away. You want to allow a little bit of time to work its magic and start breaking that dirt and grime down. And then after a minute or so, grab your brush like this one from Park Tool and start working in between the cogs. And then 
If you've got a brush like this, flip it around and use this serrated edge to then slot in between the cogs and start working out any of those big clumps that are stuck in there. So you can repeat that process over and over until you're happy the cassette is sparkly and clean. And obviously we are gonna wash it, but we'll get back to that in a minute. For now, we're gonna move on to the derailleur jockey wheels, which are these two cogs here and here. And given that their job is to shun a greasy chain up and down the cassette and the chain rings, they have a tough old life, and it's amazing actually how much dirt can build up here and actually how much resistance that causes, which certainly isn't something you want for race day. So start with, just spray a little bit of degreaser onto those cogs and then use a brush or an old rag to wipe off that dirt. But if that doesn't work, you can use a flat-headed screwdriver, just lightly against the jockey wheel, just to try and pry any of that old dirt off the jockey wheel, and then just finish off by wiping it off with a rag. And now that the jockey wheels are clean and exposed, it's time to check their condition. So they should have a flat, blunt profile to them, but over time and over use, they'll start to form a sharp tooth-like profile. And when they do get to that point, it's time to replace them. Fortunately for me, mine are fine. And now we need to clean that degreaser off the cassette and off the derailleur. So now that it's all clean, let's head back inside and take a look at the chain. It's made up of a number of intricate parts that ideally you want to be soaking to get thoroughly clean and running smoothly. Now I was a little bit late to the party on this, but these chain scrubbing devices are an absolute game changer for that. To use one, just remove the rear wheel and then attach the chain cleaner to the bottom section of the chain and make sure that the chain is nicely slotted in between the brushes. And then just fill the chain cleaner up with a chain cleaning solvent like this one and you just fill that up through this hole here and then fill the bottom half of the chamber up to the fill line and then rotate the pedals backwards for 30 revolutions. And maybe it's just me, but it's quite satisfying to see the fluid in the bottom half of the chain we're just getting darker and darker. But when that's done, remove the chain cleaner, pour away the fluid, and now you want to replace that with some soapy fluid in the bottom half of the chamber. Repeat the process, and then again, remove the chain cleaner, and now just grab a dry and clean rag and wipe the chain down. And whilst we let the chain dry off, we may as well tend to the chain rings. Now, similarly to the cassette, they do wear with time. They follow a relatively similar path. So over time, you might start to notice uh, slipping or a slight spongy feel. If you do, then you want to replace the chain rings. But for now, for cleaning the chain rings, you want to remove the chain and place it on the frame side if possible. This just gets out of the way, so then you've got better access to the chain rings to clean them. And by now, the chain rings will have had their fair share of degreaser working on them has come off the chain whilst we were cleaning that. So you're ready to start brushing them or if you just need to, just use a rag. Now, one area that you really want to focus on is in between the chain rings. Quite a lot of grit and dirt builds up there. And then when you're done with that, just use a nice clean rag and just wipe it down. And by now, hopefully the chain is dry and you're ready to apply some chain lubricant. And you want to apply that to each rivet through the chain. Allow it some time to seep into the chain and then use your rag to wipe off any excess. And once that's done, you want to whack your rear wheel back in. And that is your slick race machine ready to go. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. And if you'd like to get hold of some of this GTN kit, just head on over to our shop. And if you'd like to see that video I mentioned earlier about how to remove your cassette from your bike, just click over here. And if you'd like to see how to choose tire pressure for a triathlon, just click over here.